Welcome everybody. Today we are having a session on our heroes, a part of Freedom Struggle for Social Studies Class 5 series. Our heroes. So we have seen the British India. We have seen how the British, the Portuguese, the French, the Dutch who came to colonize India, who came as traders, had started purchasing land, set up armies, started forts, fought with the kings and took over the kingdom and then the doctrine of labs and the subsidiary alliances made them acquire more and more control over the whole of India. Then the Sipai mutiny led to governance of India by the British crown and in, through the viceroys and not the governor general of the East India companies. We have also seen how Gandhi helped in winning freedom for India. We have seen the role played by social reformers like Vivekananda, Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, Dayananda Saraswati, Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Annie Besant and others. We have seen how in 1947 we got our freedom. There are lots of people who fought for Indian independence. Most of us don't remember most of them. Only a few names come to our mind. But what we have today is because of their sacrifices. Today India is a sovereign socialist democratic republic. India is a sovereign socialist democratic republic. We have a government by the people, for the people, of the people. We have a democracy. We have self-rule. We select our rulers. We select our laws. We Indians are free to decide our fate. Free to decide our fate. And we are free to decide our future. This is because of our hard-earned freedom. This is because of the sacrifices by very many people during the freedom struggle. From the Mangal Pandey who fired the first shot in 1857 to start the Sufi mutiny till Gandhi who led his life by assassination on 30th January 1948 a lot of people had sacrificed their lives, livelihoods, future, land, property, all their resources and families for the sake of India. This freedom is very precious. This gift of free will is very precious. The values that we sometimes take for granted are very precious. The privileges that we ought to protect, nourish and nurture and savor are very precious. The values we take for granted did not come with ease. The privileges that we need to protect did not come to us with ease. The liberty of thought and expression to practice one's faith in broad terms, the power to choose did not come with ease. This liberty of thought and expression is very precious. This is over to lots of freedom fighters. Some of the forgotten names, for example, are the Velu Nachiar. Velu Nachiar walked into an ammunition store after dousing herself in oil and lighted herself to destroy. Velu Nachiar was the first human bomb. She saw a place full of ammunition stored by the British. She doused herself in oil and lit herself up to blow the place away. Mandagini Hasra. Mandagini Hasra was shot thrice in one of the processions but kept moving ahead with Indian flag in hand, saying one day Matra. During one of the civil disobedience movements, Mandagini Hasra was shot thrice but still kept moving till her last breath, saying one day Matra. Veera Bande Kataboman of Panchalam Kurchi refused to pay taxes to the East India. This was also part of the civil disobedience. Wrongful taxes he did not pay. He asked, what did you help this country? What did you help to my people? What help did you give to my families of the citizens for you to come and ask me the tax? Virabandya Kataboman of Panjalanguruji. Then Master Dasurya, he read revolutionaries for Chittagong Armory raid. 64 of people along with him went and raided a Chittagong Armory and hoisted the Indian national flag and declared going forward this will be Gandhi Raj when it was British Raj. Master Surya led the revolutionaries for Chittagong Armory raid. Tirupur Kumaran. Tirupur Kumaran succumbed to injuries and died all along holding the flag of Indian nationalists against the ban during the protest march. There was a ban against people gathering. There was a ban, ban against the protest. There was a ban against people marching. And Tirupur Kumaran, holding the flag of the nationalists, walked and got all the beatings and bled to death. This is Tirupur Kumaran. So these were some of the smaller names that we tend to forget. We can learn how to take a stand for what you believe in. 
we can learn the power of teamwork we can learn self sacrifice we can learn orientation towards action we can learn to dream big we can learn to be steadfast we can learn to be patriotic above all from these leaders who laid down their lives and lost their property and resources for the sake of india's freedom you would have heard of rani lakshmi bai she was also called maharani of jhansi jhani jhansi rani she was born to bhagiradhi sapre and morapanth tambe bhagiradhi was her mother and morapanth was her father she was known as mani karnika when she was born mani karnika or mari she was married to gangadhar rao navalkar in 42 and had a son damodar in 1851 rani jansi was born in 1828 rani of jansi was born in 1828 in 1858 she died so at the age of 30 rani of jansi died within this 30 years she fought for indian freedom in 42 she was married she had a son the child was lost when it was 3 months old and then they adopted a son called anand rao renamed it as damodar rao and brought him up now we have studied that there was something called a doctrine of laps where if you don't have a son in your blood the king cannot hand over the kingdom to his son and when he dies the kingdom will be taken away by the british this is what happened to the kingdom of jhansi in 1854 the british east india company under lord dalhousie applied the doctrine of laps and took over the kingdom This happened in 1854. Rani conducted a haldi kungram ceremony with pomp in front of all the women of Jhansi to provide assurance to her subjects in summer of 1857 and to convince them that the British were cowards and not to be afraid of them. As you are aware, in 1842, Jhansi was married and they had a child, and the child was. lost and they adopted a child in 1853 maharaja gangadhar rao expired so she became a widow in 1853 and in 1857 she conducted a haldi kungam ceremony which was not normal for hindu women in those days but this she did to provide assurance to all the women in her country and to say that we can fight the british she set up a foundry to cast cannon to be used on the walls of the fort and assemble the forces when british army did not provide her enough arms to protect the people she set up a factory to set up cannons on the top of the jhansi fort ran issued a proclamation we fight for independence we will if we are victorious enjoy the fruits of victory if defeated we shall surely earn the glory and salvation this was something similar to the declaration made by lord krishna in gita at the time of mahabharata war this rani did in 1857 after the sipahi mutiny in the initial days of sipahi mutiny gandhi jhansi rani was not supportive of the mutiny but subsequently when she knew that british are not supporting enough and this was a time to fight for india's independence she started fighting against the british jansi rani trained women for armed warfare she played a major role along with tantia tope and nana saheb she died fighting captain henage of the 8th king's royal irish hussars fought slaughtering 5000 indian soldiers including any indian over the age of 16 captain henage was known to kill anybody above 16 he killed a lot of people he slaughtered not just killed in the war and it was his regiment that killed rani lakshmi boy captain henage's regiment was a one that fought against rani lakshmi boy tantya tope nana saheb and others and she was shot in spite of being seriously injured and died fighting she was injured she fell from her horse she was shot in spite of that and she died fighting this is how we lost mani karnika rani jansi jansi of rani maharani of jansi another important freedom fighter is bala gangadhar tilak he was born in july 1956 and he lived up to august 1920 for about 70 years bala gangadhar tilak was also called lokamanya his given name or birth name was keshav gangadhar tilak keshav was his given name Lokamanya was the name of Bala Gangadhar Tilak. He married Taipi Neba. Gangadhar Tilak was a teacher or a Sanskrit scholar. Bala Gangadhar Tilak, after his marriage, went to college. He got his Bachelor of Arts in first class in mathematics from Deccan College of Pune in 
and then in 1879 he went on to acquire his llb degree law he became a barrister of law he is known for his friendship cooperation and team with bal bal pal triumvirate lal bal pal means lala lajpat rai bala gangadhar tilak and vipin chandra pal bala gangadhar tilak is called as a father of indian unrest british gave him this name because he was the one who was creating the civil disobedience and non cooperation among the masses in the rural india father of the indian unrest but mahatma gandhi called him maker of modern india look at the twist from who is saying what the british called him father of indian unrest while gandhi called him maker of modern india he was the strongest advocate of swaraj swaraj is self rule we have seen earlier that india was not satisfied even with the dominion status we did not wanted to be ruled by the british we wanted to have self rule gangadhar tilak bala gangadhar tilak told the most famous words swaraj is my birthright and i shall have it swaraj is my birthright and i shall have it these words were these words belong to bala gangadhar tilak he co-founded the new english school for secondary education so when we started swadeshi and when people started not cooperating with british institutions and starting indian institutions and indian factories indian schools were started so as a precursor to it in 1880 bala gangadhar tilak started the new english school actually he was working in another school and he did not like the management over there with the dispute he left them and started a new school then he set up a deccan education society in 1884 the international congress itself was founded only in 1885 but before that itself bala gangadhar tilak started a school started a college and then he started furugs and college for post secondary studies and in the schools and colleges he himself was teaching english and other languages he taught nationalist ideas with emphasis on indian culture bala gangadhar tilak was imprisoned a number of times he joined the congress in 90 and he opposed the moderate attitude that is why he was called the father of unrest and he published the inflammatory articles in his marathi magazine called kesari he was running or he was author of publisher of two magazines one is maratha one is kesari maratha was in english and kesari was in marathi following the partition of bengal which was something that made upset made the whole of india upset made all the indians upset the strategy of lord curzon to weaken the nationalist movement tilak encouraged the swadeshi movement in 1890 he joined the congress 1905 the partition of bengal happened and tilak encouraged swadeshi because the government was trying to split the muslims and indians by the partition of bengal so when the indians were trying or suffering from the divide and rule of the muslim hindu religion based partition by the british government tilak encouraged the swadeshi movement he wanted to boycott anything foreign he opposed the moderate views of gopal krishna gokhale and others and he supported the views of bipin chandra pal and lala lajpat rai bipin chandra pal was from bengal lala lajpat rai was from punjab and bala gangadhar tilak was from maharashtra in 1907 congress party split into the radicals faction and the moderate faction the factionism came to the public in 1907 in 1908 1908 bala gangadhar tilak called for purna swaraj immediate self rule and he was charged with sedition sent to 6 years in burma he was sent to jail in burma luckily whenever gandhi ji was jailed he was jailed within india but if you remember there were people who were jailed and sent to shah alam and all was sent to burma now bala gangadhar tilak also was jailed and sent to burma in 1808 for calling purna swaraj bala gangadhar tilak unsuccessfully tried to convince mohandas gandhi to abolish non violence and try to get self rule by any means gandhi was sticking to non violence satya ahimsa satyagraha and tilak was unsuccessful in convincing gandhi to get self rule by any means tilak helped to find found the all india home rule tilak was one of the founders of all india home rule league 
This was done in 1916 at the time of World War. And Jinnah, Annie Besant, etc. were other people who were with him for this Home Rule League. Home Rule League is an organization that wanted to promote self-rule by Indians in India. He was in favor of social reforms but without interference with the British government. He didn't want anybody to tell what to do. He wanted people to understand and do it themselves. He also published the Maharatta Weekly in English. The Kesari was in Marathi and the Kesari used to give inflammatory writings by Tilak. That is why he was causing unrest. Now let us look out about Subhash Chandra Bose. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Bose was called Netaji because he was a leader. People called him leader. He set up the INA and the, it was uh, India's army by the Indians, for the Indians. And so the people there started giving him the name, pet name, Netaji. Prabhavati Dutt Bose and Janakinath Bose were his parents. He was born in Katak, Orissa. And Bihar, Orissa were part of the Bengal presidency, Bengal constituency in those days. He was ninth in a family of 14 children. In 1913, he was admitted to presidency college where he studied briefly. And then from there, he went to Scottish Church College at the University of Calcutta and passed his BA in 1918. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose passed his BA in 1918 at the time of World War One. we can say. He came fourth in the ICS examination because they were the educated rich people of the Bengal. Mr. Bose wanted Subhash Chandra Bose to go to London, study and get the ICS position, Indian Civil Service, a British examination for selecting people who will be doing the administrative ruling of the Indians. But he did not work, want to work under Indian government. He did not work for the British government. He didn't want to be a slave of the British and he resigned in 1921. So Netaji, though he got selected to ICS, in, he resigned in 1921 without much serving because he did not want to work under British government or British rule. He started a newspaper called Swaraj. Netaji started a newspaper called Swaraj and he was responsible for the Bengal Provincial Congress Committee. When the International Congress had a meeting in Bengal, he arranged in such a fashion that everybody was appreciative of his organizational skills. He was editor of a newspaper called Forward, funded by Chitranjan Das's mentor. So Chitranjan Das and Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose were together. Bose worked as a CEO of the Calcutta Municipal Corporation. He was elected a mayor of the Calcutta in 24 and 1930. Though he did not serve in the civil service, because of his intelligence, capability, and connections and his work for the Congress Committee. He became the CEO of the Calcutta Municipal Corporation and was elected as a mayor of Calcutta in 24 and 30. He also became General Secretary of the Congress Party in 27. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose belonged to the school of thought of radicals or nationalists opposing the views of Gandhi of non-violence, ahimsa, satya, etc. for Indian freedom struggle. He appeared in a structure for the Congress uh, meeting and was elected the president. But he resigned due to differences with Gandhi. Actually, he won the election against a person who was nominated by Gandhi. In 39, Bose formed the All India Forward Bloc along with Chitranjan Jha's and the Central Works. He was on house arrest, watched 24-7 in Calcutta post that. Then he dressed as a Pathan, wearing a long coat to avoid getting identified or noticed and he escaped. He escaped in disguise. He went via Bihar, Peshawar, Afghanistan, Soviet Union and Rome. So we have seen Bose in disguise escaped the British when he was in house arrest after he founded the All India Forward Bloc. Then he somehow through different countries, Peshawar, Afghanistan, Soviet Union and Rome, 
reached Germany. In Germany, with the German funds, he set up the Free India Radio, Free India League, Free India Center, Free India Legion. There are a strong 3,000 people supporting him. In 43, he boarded a submarine, German submarine, and got transferred to a Japanese submarine and finally reached Sumatra. With the Japanese support, he formed the Indian National Army. He revamped the Indian National Army. And he said, give me blood and I shall give you freedom. Just like Swaraj is my birthright of Balagangadhar Tilak, Hetaji Subhash Chandra Bose said, give me blood and I shall give you freedom. In 1944 in Burma. The provisional government of India, presided by Bose, was formed in Japanese-occupied Andaman Nicobar Islands. So, the portion of India that was under Japanese control, Bose declared as Free India. He formed the government of Free India. And then he presided over that government. This was in 1944 45. His plane crashed in Taiwan and died from third degree burns subsequently in 1945. So, Bose, Netaji Chandra Bose, was a radical. He believed in armed conflict with the British. He tried to go to different parts of the world and enlist the support of the Russians, the Germans, the Japanese to fight against India. Using their help, he set up the India League, India Region, he set up the uh, Free India Center, he set up the Indian National Army, and he fought. And he even, he even set up a provisional government of India in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now let us have to look at Sarojini Naidu. Sarojini Naidu is also called the Nightingale of India. She was born in 1879 and she lived up to 1949 for about 70 years. Her mother is Bharata Sundari Devi, her father is Agorenath Chattopadhyay. They were Bengalis, but they were in Andhra Pradesh at the time. In 1895, His Excellency, Her Highness the Nizam's Charitable Trust, founded by Sikh Nizam, Mahubu Bali Khan, gave her a chance to study in England, first at King's College London and later at Girton's College. Though she passed matriculation at an early age from the Madras Presidency, she was not interested in going to the college. Though her father was a college principal, Nizam's first college in Hyderabad, his Sarojini Nadu's father was a principal, but she was not studying and interested in studying the college. When she got the scholarship, she went to King's College London and Girton College Cambridge. She became the president of the Indian National Congress in 1925. The Congress was formed in 1885 and she was the first president, lady president of the Indian National Congress in 1925. She became the governor of United Provinces in 1947 when British was trying to give Indians the power by elections. She became the governor of the state of Uttar Pradesh after independence. She published a book in 1912 called In the Bazaars of Hyderabad, which is one of her most popular poems. She published her first poem when she was 12. She was married to Govindaraj Naidu, a general physician, and had five children with him. Mr. Govindaraj was neither a Bengali, while Sarojini was a Bengali. And uh, he was a doctor. And she was a poet. Sarojini Naidu joined the Indian Freedom Movement or the Independence Movement in 1905 at the time of partition of Bengal. Between 15 to 18, she traveled to different regions of India delivering lectures. That means she spoke to people and tried to understand the social welfare requirements of the women of India. In 1917, along with Annie Besson of the Home Rule Movement, she formed the Women's India Association, the first association of women in India. Women's India Association was formed by Sarojini Naidu, Annie Besson and others. There, she wanted to promote universal suffrage, that is voting rights for everybody. In 1919, she visited London along with others as a part of the All India Home, Re Home Rule League. All India Home Rule League. There is a Swaraj. In 1920, she joined Gandhi Satyagraha. In 1920, she joined Gandhi Satyagraha. After that, she went with Gandhi to London also. And to proceed over the 1925 annual session of the International Congress. And uh, at Kanpur, K-A-N-P-U-R today in Uttar Pradesh. And uh, that is why she became Later also, the governor of United Provinces, which is Uttar Pradesh, again the governor of the state of Uttar Pradesh, Prashti Independence, etc. She said, in the battle for liberty, fear is one unforgivable treachery and despair, the one unforgivable sin. Sarojini Naidu said, fear is an unforgivable tre treachery 
and despair the unforgivable sin in 1925 annual session of the congress she was the president first indian woman president of the indian national congress the other woman who was a president was annie besant who was not an indian in 1931, Naidu leaders participated in the second round table conference along with Gandhi. Naidu began writing at the age of 12 itself. Her play, Mahir Munir, written in Persian, was imp impressed the Nawab of Hyderabad. And then she wrote a popular story book also. There are so many other leaders. Govindala Pan, Maulana Abul Kalam Asa, the Vallabhai Patel, the Iron Man of India, Rabindranath Tagore, who won the Nobel Prize, Mother Mohan Malavya, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, who was the father of the Indian constitution, Lala Lajpata Rai, then Punjab Kesari, Vinoba Bhave, Lal Bahadur Shastri. There were so many leaders who fought for India's freedom. We have to study about all of them for us to understand how precious their freedom is and how much sacrifice they made for making India what it is today. Sarojini Naidu was also called Bharat Kokila or Kavi Queen. Uh, Logamanya Tilak was the name of Balaganga Tilak. Rani of Janji is the name of Manikarnika or Janji Hirani. Netaji is the name of Subhash Chandra Bose. And the doctrine of lapse is something that says if you don't have a son of your own, your kingdom will not go to your son and the government of India, the ruled by the British East India Company will be taken over. Radicals are people who think differently, totally opposite. Nationalists are the people who believe nation comes first. So these radical ra national thinkers said freedom of India is foremost and no rules apply to get this freedom. The man of disguise is the other name for Netaji because he was able to escape house, escape, house arrest and go through different countries. The first woman president of International Congress is nobody other than Sarojini Naidu. Thanks for watching this video. Please keep subscribing.